Would you put your hands in the life, or your life actually, in the hands of a robot? See, I've messed it up already. I'm so confused about it. It's the latest trend in medicine here. Scarless robotic surgery. Dr. Tirso Del Junco, who just, Jr., actually, who just performed three robotic surgeries today is in studio with us tonight. First of all, welcome. Thank you. Robotic surgery. Yeah. What kind of surgeries did you do today? Today we did the first single site, single incision gallbladder removal surgery in the state of California. We're the first community hospital in the state to do it. I think we're the third hospital that's been involved just in the last month because this new FDA approved is it all robotic, or is it you uh, on a joystick directing the robot? It's, it's me operating the robot. We, we, I actually brought the device that we actually insert into the patient's navel, just below it, connect the camera and the instruments to it. Mm -hmm. I go to a consult and operate the robot that's connected to the instrument. So you're good on video games as well? I wasn't <laughs> as a kid because I didn't have any, but um, I had to learn. You had to learn. I've had to learn. What sort of surgeries? You mentioned gallbladder today. What other surgeries or procedures would be applicable to this? Uh, the, yeah, this the actual robot's been in vogue for quite a long time, probably in the last eight years or so. Um, prostate surgery is where it's, it, it was born with that procedure, and that robotic procedure now is the gold standard for men with prostate disease. Really making headways in the female, the gynecological arena. Um, I myself have done some female surgeries in using the robot. Mm -hmm. uh, and colorectal cancer, uh, obviously the gallbladder surgery. So what are the advantages of not having a surgeon's hands or somebody operating on you directly? Well, you know, we've been doing laparoscopic surgery for 20, 25 years now. And so the whole idea of minimally invasive surgery is where we're headed and faster recoveries, less post-operative pain, shorter hospital stays. Having my hands in someone's abdomen requires a large incision. Mm -hmm. Henceforth, they're in the hospital longer, post-operative pain, re return to work is a lot longer. So we're, we're moving towards this, this arena of minimally invasive surgery and now we're getting to one incision. Okay, I see you with a, a patient here. Do you ever have trouble explaining it to a patient? Having a patient sign on to the idea that you're going to be operating a joystick? Well, it's interesting because these three cases which, you know, today we... This is the you first were busy one. today, weren't we you? We were busy today. These are the first ones uh, that we did um, and showing the device that I have in my hand being placed right now. Um, you know, the, the, the whole concept of minimally invasive surgery is not new to patients. So we, we're, we're aware of it, they're aware of it. So having the discussion with them was a lot easier. But here you can see we're connecting the robotic arms. That's actually the camera that's being connected to the device. And once we get these instruments connected, um, they'll show, I hope, show us going over to the consult. So those are the robotic arms you're yes. talking about here? those are the robotic arms that we're connecting to the instruments. You know, I, I look at this device, and you would think it would require a big incision, but I, I guess it's the... It's less than an inch. It's three-quarters of an inch, two centimeters, and that's me operating the, uh, the instruments at the console. And when we talk about it being inserted in and around the belly button, that's sort of the center of the body there. You can go many places, I would assume, from Absolutely. There? We can actually turn the whole robot around and work into the pelvis, and in this case, we're working up towards the, the, uh, the chest. This is where the gallbladder is located. So we can move, move around the, the robot to fit where we're working. I'm not saying it happens a lot around here, but sometimes the computers and the robots have a mind of their own. Do you ever have issues with that? Thank goodness the robot listens to what the, I'm asking it to do. Uh, the only, obviously, the, the concern in the, the company, who, in, in Surgical Intuitive, who's put this whole product together, and they've... Mm -hmm. They've got this thing wired, so if there's a backup pack, or if the electricity goes down, the robot is still functioning, and, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing, amazing product. Where do you see this going in 10, 20 years? Well, you know, I think that who, I don't know that the, the, the technology is here. That the, what we do with the technology is we're adapting what we're doing in open surgery, now robotically. So it, the arena of building instruments so that we can take it to the chest to do heart work, we're, they're starting get, getting into the thoracic surgery work. Mm -hmm. So it's getting the instruments to work in the areas that we need to work. So I think it's get, once we get the instruments working, I just, it, there's endless amount of... Can you envision anything that would be off limits with this sort of thing? 
Boy, you know, I'd hate to say as soon as you say no, they have us trained to, training to do what we thought we weren't going to be able to do. So I, I would think that where we've come in the last 10 to 15 years, that we're going to find ways to do things that we would never think that we could do. Is it something you think people, if they're, if they're going in for any kind of surgery, they should ask their surgeon about? Absolutely. Uh, that, and certainly with gallbladder surgery in particular, which is probably the most common procedure done in the United States, this technology is not widely available yet. It will be very mm -hmm. soon. Um, and it's just the limiting factor is getting instrumentation to the places where the robots are. But yes, it, it's, it's here, and that's the, it's the cutting edge. Tell me the recovery time again uh, in terms of days or weeks. If you go in for a typical gallbladder, it would be, what, a couple of weeks? And this is how long? Well, they go in. It's, it's done as an outpatient, so they go in in the morning, go home the same day. Um, typically, depending on the type of work that they do, they can be at work a week after surgery. Um, if there's more labor-intensive work involved, you know, you want to be a little bit more careful because of where the site is. Mm -hmm. And it can be anywhere from two to three weeks. But again, it's, it's the type of surgical procedure that you're doing. Gallbladder surgery, they're back to work really quickly. Wow, it's amazing. Doctor, thank you so thank much you for, for coming Thank you for having in. me. Appreciate Pleasure. it.